Hey everyone, it's Amy Astro here and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to continue talking about my observatory project. And in the last video we talked about getting permits and what all was required to do that for me. Today we're going to talk about budget. How much do I believe this project's going to cost me? Um, and, and some different ways that I went about choosing my lumber supplier and who was going to help me and all of these things. So if you like this type of content, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with all of your Astro friends. And please follow me along my observatory build journey. All right, everybody so I'm back here on my computer now and let's start talking about my budget now in the very beginning I had this very basic isometric drawing that I created of what I thought I wanted to build and to come up with a budget to see if I could even start this project I took this drawing and then my basic plan drawing here and I counted out how much lumber I needed in everything and came up with a, a very general count of how many two by fours, two by eights, you know, all of that that I needed. Now, this was the very beginning before I even started with my permit process because I needed to know if I could afford it. So what I did is, you know, once I had all of these numbers, I went to Home Depot because it was just easy. And, and I looked between Home Depot and Lowe's and honestly, the prices were pretty well the same. And I wrote down in a little Excel spreadsheet how much each piece of lumber was going to cost me, multiplied it out by how many I needed. And when it was all said and done, my original idea was it was going to cost me about $8,000 to build this. Now, keep in mind, that's no labor. That's no what if. And um, what else was that without? No labor. No what if, oh, and no concrete. So I knew those were going to increase the price. And not really understanding the prices of everything today, I threw in $2,000 in my budget to cover the concrete. Uh, yeah, that was really low. But that's, that's, you know, for another day. But what I came down to was I needed $10,000 to create this project and um, decided I was just going to build it myself, which was probably not the brightest idea I've had yet. But $10,000, I had saved $12,000, so that left me a $2,000 cushion. I felt fairly confident that I could move forward with this project. Okay, so... Once I decided I was going to move forward with this project, I went and redrew all of my plans just to get my permit and everything. But once I had my permit and my plans all set, I went to each one of the local lumber houses and I had them quote one each of all the items I needed. And in doing that, it let me see how much their prices were. I compared them to Home Depot and they were all pretty close. But there was definitely one um, vendor that stood out to me. Now, they weren't the lowest quote. They weren't the highest quote. But they were the ones that actually took the time and listened to me and my project. And I showed them my drawings. I told them what I wanted to accomplish. I gave them my um, bill of material with the quantity counts. And they sincerely... Um, they cared and that meant a lot to me and they told me some items that I was missing that I had no clue I needed so they helped me get my quote more accurate with um, fewer trips back to the the store to get things but I had four quotes and then I took those four quotes 
I took those four quotes and I put them in an Excel spreadsheet and I wrote down, you know, all the items, how much they were. And, you know, part of that helped me decide which vendor had the best price. Now, to get my bill of material, you know, the quantities and everything, I took my drawings, my finished drawings after they were approved. And you can see I've got each drawing name out here. I called my north wall, south wall, west wall, and I counted out how many items I needed for each wall. And once I had per each wall of everything that I needed, all the way down to the rail systems on each side, I did a sort in Excel and I got them all to group together. Like here's my two by four by 16s and I needed six of those. Now I've got a really good count on how to come up with each one. So once I had these counts, I grouped everything together and realized that here, two by four by 16 treated lumber, I needed a total of seven. Now I took all of these numbers and I rounded them up to the next nearest 10, or if it was sitting at nine, then I would add like four more to it for waste, um, boards that come in crooked or too knotty for me to use. Um, just basically, you know, it's good to have at least a 10% adder in materials for what I didn't know and all that. But the good thing was, is the vendor told me that go ahead and order your 10% over or a little bit extra if that makes you feel comfortable because we're going to deliver it to you because you're spending more than $600. So delivery is now free. And a 16 foot board, I can't carry myself from the store out to my house. So I over ordered everything that I needed. So knowing that they were going to come back at the end of my project and any lumber that I have not used, I did not destroy, um, still looks new. So I'm keeping everything covered up and stuff, no nail holes. They will take back for a full refund and they will come out to my house at no charge. And that was a huge bonus. So knowing that I definitely over ordered some items and it's proven to be very, very helpful. But here we can see now that I've chosen my vendor, I put in their actual quote prices. And the good thing is, is previously I'd gotten quotes on one each of everything. Now I've come back and they've given me um, quantity discounts. They also gave us a military discount because my father was with me and he was with the Navy. He's a Navy veteran. So that was really nice. So even though they weren't the lowest bid, by the time it was all said and done, it was no difference, you know. So I'm really happy with the vendor I chose. They went above and beyond to help me with this project. But here you can see a full list of everything that I got. I've got all my boards. I used mostly pressure treated, um, so I don't have to worry about termites. My studs are just regular um, stud boards, um, but they should be fine. And let's see, I needed some concrete. Some things I didn't know about were hurricane straps. Uh, I needed some uh, anchor bolts so I could anchor the building sill plate into the concrete so it doesn't fly off. Uh, I didn't know I needed house wrap. That's that plastic wrap that you see around all the new houses, but it didn't really dawn on me. So that was something that they told me about. They told me about the roofing fell and special nails. They have little plastic caps for the roofing. Um, everything worked out really well. And because my budget was sitting in a good shape, I was able to upgrade my siding from just a, a vinyl siding to a hardy board siding, which matches my house. I have a really nice dark gray aluminum roof. Um, I'm really happy with that. I don't know if it's aluminum, it's probably steel, but it's a metal roof. It's, it's going to be a very attractive when it puts on. And I've ordered myself a set of double doors to go on the front. And the double door purpose was so I could get my JMI wheelie bar in and out. I also got the ADA sill on the doors and that's the lower sill plate for the handicap in and out, you know, with wheelchairs and such. 
but it also keeps me from having a big bump bump when I roll equipment out the door. So that was really nice. And I didn't know what that was called at the time, but my vendor helped me out with that. Um, I ordered two windows from him and we ended up, he, he was able to find windows that they were going to build there on site with materials they had. We used standard sizes and I chose just to have solid picture windows, not to have um, a screen for ventilation or anything. They're just for looks and all that, you know, it just worked out really great having a vendor take the time to help you get you what you need, things that you didn't really know that that's what you wanted. But as I go through my budget, and these are with actual prices for the material that I have purchased. So now we're no longer in the, can I afford to do this? This is what I have literally spent. I bought my wheels off of Amazon, um, some doorknobs, uh, some circuit breakers. Um, these items here in blue are things that I bought that I'm going to return because I'm not going to need them. I decided to put my outdoor electrical in conduit which added another hundred dollars to my thing budget but in doing that if i have one conductor go bad between the house and my building all i have to do is cut one end tie it off to the new cable and pull it through the uh, conduit so i don't have to dig that ditch again because trust me that ditch was absolutely no fun digging and i did get my trusses prefabbed at a um, manufacturer here locally. That way I knew they were structurally, um, they were what they needed to be. All I had to do was give them the dimensions of my building, the roof pitch that I wanted, and they did the rest. And that worked out nice. I needed 11 trusses, and when it was all said and done, it was right about $1,000, and that was well worth the price. So where am I at right now with my budget? My budget so far is almost $12,000, which is right at the top of what I had in my pocket at the time I started this project. My concrete magically impriced by $1,000. This is partly because I needed one foot footers all the way around my building. And we used an excavator that had a two foot wide scoop. So that now means my footers are now two foot wide and a little over a foot deep. So it's kind of overkill, but that cost me more for more labor and more concrete. So that's just what it is and how it worked out, unfortunately. But here I am. This is my final build package. I used my drawing numbers to help me sort everything out to get my list. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. I've got some really nice details on how to put everything together. And I believe once I get done building all of this, I'm going to clean up these drawings with some changes that I made um, that happened along the way. And uh, I might put these out for sale for you guys. So watch in future videos and I might let you know how to go about getting them. But one lesson learned right out of the gate, my door. I did not leave room across the top of my door for a, um, for a header board. So this is a standard side board and it goes all the way up to the top and I've just got a couple two by fours up there. Now I should have had a two by six go across the top. In hindsight, I should have made a shorter door and um, I completely could have done that at really not much extra cost to do so. But keep that in mind that if you're gonna go with seven foot walls like I did, a standard door is just really too tall. It's 83 inches, so that kind of caused me to do some finagling to get things to work out. So guys, that's where I am at this moment. I figured out my budget that said that yes, I can do it. I've got my pricing from my vendors. I chose a vendor. I've purchased all my materials that I needed to get everything built. Um, I found out that I definitely under budgeted. Um, this is some hindsight things and I'm going to show you that in some lesson learned videos here. 
but I started thinking I needed an eight to 10,000. Reality hit and I'm at 13,000 that I needed to build this. But keep in mind when I'm saying I'm 13,000, this is with uh, top notch supplies. These are not the standard um, T111 sidings. It's not the standard, you know, wavy roof that you see, the, the metal tin. Um, I upgraded to a nice metal roof, to nice hardy board siding that I will paint to match my house. Um, I've also added insulation to my ceiling. So I have some radiant vapor barrier um, above my ceiling. I've got um, OSB poured felt paper, and I'm going to have the aluminum, um, the roof. So all that's going to keep me with a quiet building and it's going to keep the building from condensating and leaving moisture inside the building. So really I caused my budget to increase the whole concrete thing that was kind of out of my control. Um, it's just one of those things that happen and you know, it's kind of suck it up buttercup. You know, you want this building, you just, sometimes you have to deal with things. So today spent is about 13,000 and hopefully it won't go too much higher, but I have this weird feeling it's about to go up some. So the big question here is, can I get this build for less than having backyard observatory come down here and build it for me? I'm not too sure at this point and um, maybe I should have waited for them. Y'all have to see that in future videos, all right? So keep following me along on this journey. I'll let you know how things go as they develop and I can't wait to see a finished observatory just as much as y'all can't wait. So I'm Amy Astro. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, share with all your Astro friends and don't forget I love each and every one of y'all and I will see y'all in the next video. Goodbye y'all.